Imagine a machine with the same level of intelligence as a human being. Yeah, that sounds like science fiction, but it might actually become a reality. If this reality is an amazing or absolutely horrifying one, well, that's a different question. In this video, we focus on if we can reach AGI, that is artificial general intelligence, in the first place, how to get there and which puzzle pieces we need to click together on the way. What is my purpose? You pass butter. Oh my god. It's because of recent developments that this question is pushed into my consciousness. Because for the very first time, I think that for me personally, it feels necessary to think about AI on a grander scale. There are breakthroughs left and right. And yet, even the experts among experts can't agree on when AGI is going to happen. You know, AI has become like the mega buzzword, which is usually a really bad sign. I hope, I hope it doesn't mean like the field is about to fall apart. Some say within the next 10 years, others say in the next 30, and some even say it will never happen. Now, why is that? What are the challenges or roadblocks that we are facing? And why are there other people who think that AGI is basically around the corner in the next decade? Artificial general intelligence is a hypothetical form of AI that would possess the same general intelligence as a human being. This would include the ability to understand and adapt to new situations, learn from experience and solve the problems in a wide variety of domains. It's a highly thought after goal in the field of artificial intelligence, because it would represent a major breakthrough in the field and could have a wide range of applications. From helping to automate complex tasks to enabling the development of intelligent machines that can assist or even replace humans in various tasks. The potential benefits of AGI are enormous and many researchers are working towards achieving this goal. And yeah, the potential dangers of this are also enormous. We will consider and discuss all the ethical considerations, what is good and what is bad, in a future video. The quest of AGI is also not a new one. The concept has been around for decades and some of the earliest discussions of AGI can be traced back to the 1950s and 60s. At that time, researchers in the field of artificial intelligence began to explore the possibility of creating intelligent machines that could think and reason like humans. And I believe that's because it's such a powerful idea. You can look at it from so many different angles. In 1965, AI pioneer Herbert A. Simmons said, machines will be capable within 20 years of doing any work a man can do. And this leads me to my next point. We are very bad at estimating the future and especially how long things take. We often don't know what we don't know. This survey shows well how widely different the AGI estimates of experts really are. While some thought the 2020s are the year for superhuman AI, many believed it would never happen. Before we dive into some of the things that will suggest it will happen, and maybe even sooner than many of us think, I want to focus on the term never. Because that's such a strong statement for technology in general. Saying something will never happen from a technology standpoint, that's pretty wild. Theoretically, it is possible to model any computational machine, including the human brain, with a relatively simple machine that can perform basic computations and has access to infinite memory and time. This is the Church-Turing hypothesis laid out in 1950. It is universally accepted. However, as stated, it requires certain difficult conditions. Infinite time and memory. We don't have that. Most computer scientists believe that it will take less than infinite time and memory to model the human brain. However, there is not a mathematically sound way to prove this belief as we do not understand the brain enough to exactly understand its computational power. We will just have to build such a machine. I know I take the opposite side from some very famous people in this debate, but we're nowhere near close to general AI. Not in our lifetimes, you don't have to worry about it. Even in our lifetimes? To actually model general intelligence, you run into all kinds of problems. First, we don't know how the brain works at all. Number two, we've never even modeled a paramecium or an amoeba, let alone a human brain. Number three, there's this assumption that all of the uh, computation is going at the cellular level, at the neuron level, whereas nature is very parsimonious. It uses everything at its disposal. There's a lot of machinery inside the cell that is doing calculations that is intelligent, that isn't accounted for. And the best estimates are it would take 50 years of Moore's law before we can simulate what's going on inside a cell near perfectly, and probably 100 years before we can build a brain that can simulate inside the cells. So putting it at saying that I'm just going to model a neuron as on or off, 
off and then use that to build a human brain is overly simplistic. Furthermore, I would posit there's no such thing as general intelligence. Every intelligence is contextual within the context of the environment that it's in, so you have to evolve an environment around it. I haven't seen anything that would lead me to indicate we're approaching general AI. Instead, we're solving deterministic, closed-set, finite problems using large amounts of data. But it's not sexy to talk about that. But let's do a step back. How would we even know if an AI qualifies as an AGI? How would we know that our machine has general intelligence? There are a few ways to do so. The definition itself is actually kind of tricky, because there are lots of different ones out there. From an AI that is as capable as a median human being that you could hire as a co-worker, to a super intelligence that is magnitudes more capable than us. The most famous test is the Turing test. It involves a human evaluator who engages in a conversation with another human and a machine, without knowing which is which. If the evaluator is unable to distinguish the machine from the human based on the conversation, the machine is said to have passed the Turing test. No AI so far has passed this test. There are, however, already examples in which an AI fooled a human. Then there are also a few tests that require the AI to be able to navigate the physical world. My favorite one here is the coffee test designed by Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak. He proposes that a machine should be able to enter any kitchen, find all the necessary ingredients and equipment to make coffee, and then make a cup of coffee that is as good as a human could make. I can imagine some very fun experiments here and a lot of AI slapstick action. Something that would also impress me and is likely coming this decade is AI text-to-video generation. Text-to-image generation is already pretty good, far from perfect, but still really impressive. Video generation, on the other hand, is not as good yet. I believe this is a good benchmark because creating realistic, coherent videos is much more difficult than images and it takes a much deeper understanding of how our world works. How do physics work? How do humans walk exactly? In what way do gears click into one another? This is way harder than image generation. Since we want to build general AI, the MMLU multitask language understanding tasks are a good benchmark as well. You can see that as of now, the biggest models do quite well and reach almost human-like levels in many areas. Where they are not even close is STEM and especially math. So what would it take to get there? One way to look at it is pure computational power and model size, which is likely not the only path and we will talk about more creative solutions in a bit. Considering that our intelligence is fixed and machine intelligence is growing, it is only a matter of time before machines surpass us, unless there's some hard limit to their intelligence. We haven't encountered such a limit yet. You know, on the one hand, we say, hey, 2012, like, that was the moment, like, everything changed, you know, that, like, you look at these, these we, we have all these curves of how much compute people put into the landmark results. It was going, like, 10x year over year, still continuing, by the way. Um, that's, that's a decade of 10x year over year. That's insane. Take a look at this graph. It shows the model size in billions of parameters of the big AI models between 2018 and 2022. This is a log scale, meaning every line is a 10x of the previous line and it is starting to look like another Moore's law. We often get caught in this debate of like, is it all about scale or is it all about algorithms? Is it all about data? And the answer is, that's the wrong question, right? It's really like you multiply together these factors, you still have algorithmic progress. And there we've again done studies. That compute's also falling exponentially. We're basically making exponential progress in algorithms. That is an amazing force too. You know, it's like, I've got this exponential, I've got that exponential. Like, let's not even talk about the data exponential. Humanity is just so innovative that we're not going to hit a wall um, for, for the foreseeable future. But to get to artificial general intelligence, it is unlikely that just text data is enough. And there are already a few different models that take this approach of multiple different formats. DeepMind's Gato, also known as the generalist agent, is probably the most famous example here. It actually has a very small model size compared to GPT-3, Gopher and others. But the training data consists of as many different modalities that they could put into this. The small size shows that this is just a proof of concept, and still, Gato is able to perform pretty well. Gato performs over 450 out of 604 tasks at over 50% expert score threshold. When DeepMind takes this proof of concept and scales it up, I think this next iteration will be the closest thing to AGI we've seen thus far. And then maybe put this into something like a Tesla Optimus or Boston Dynamics robot and things are getting very interesting, for good or bad. Again, we will discuss this in a future video. 
And speaking of these robots, it is unknown if the AI would need to learn in the real world and touch things to become truly intelligent. Physical touch can give you a lot of information that is hard to convey in text or images. Listen to this short clip of Andrei Karpathy, a legend in the field. Most of the models that sort of do these sort of magical tasks are in a text realm. Um, mm -hmm. I think, uh, as I mentioned, I'm suspicious that the text realm is not enough to actually build full understanding of the world. I do actually think you need to go into pixels and understand the physical world and how it works. So I do think that we need to extend these models to consume images and videos and train on a lot more data that is multimodal in that way. Do you think you need to touch the world to understand it also? Well, that's the big open question I would say in my mind is if you also require the embodiment and the ability to uh, sort, of, sort of interact with the world, run experiments and um, have a data of that form, then you need to go to Optimus. Optimus may lead to AGI uh, because Optimus, I, to me, there's nothing beyond Optimus. You have like this humanoid form factor that can actually like do stuff in the world. You can have millions of them interacting with humans and so on. and. Uh, if that doesn't give a rise to AGI at some point, like not, I'm not sure what will. So as you can see, there are lots of different open questions that are not answered yet. And to me, this makes this whole field so interesting in the first place. Do you want to know how I work? Yeah, actually, how do you work? Imagination and the way you approach these questions is key. My next video will probably be about how first principles thinking led to the recent incredible advancements. And while we don't know when AGI is coming, I like Greg Brookman's perspective on this. I think kind of what we're building, it's almost like building computers. Like you think about the heyday of Moore's law, right? Where it's just like, there's a new chip that comes out and then there's a new chip that comes out. And it's kind of like, what's the, you know, what's the path to building the best computer? The answer is, well, you just keep building the next best chip and you keep building the next best chip and you keep getting better peripherals and all these, you know, you keep working on every single piece of the technology. Neural networks that we learn to harness more and more, the scaling laws, doing all the science alignment, extremely important, making sure these models not just are smart, but actually are aligned with what humans intend. Uh, all of that, I think, is the stack. And so I think that, you know, what our goal is, is just to keep doing something that was previously impossible every single year. So, you know, the, the, you know I guess we'll, you should check back in a year, but uh, <laughs> hopefully uh, 2023, we'll, we'll all forget about Dolly 2 and GPT-3, and we'll be talking about something new. And I think as long as we continue that, like, you cannot continue that path without ending up somewhere amazing. Something we only scratched on the surface in this video is AI image and video generation. Just a few months ago, I was blown away by technologies like Midjourney, Dolly, and Stable Diffusion. So check out this video next. Thank you for watching, and if you would like to see more, make sure to subscribe.